All right, Ty, thank you. And at 431, new this morning, one man in critical condition after an overnight shooting in this area at about 51st Avenue and McDowell. We're zooming in to show you where the police cordoned off that particular part of the parking lot. See the vehicles. So uh, this is outside the Classico Phoenix nightclub. Police found a man who'd been shot several times in a car that had crashed into that SUV. He was rushed to the hospital. Not clear yet who shot him or what led up to the shooting. Well, this is right out of a mob movie. Human remains have just been discovered along the shoreline of Lake Mead. And Fox 10's Marissa Sarbach has the latest on who made the discovery and also what the Las Vegas Police Department is saying about this. Marissa. Those remains were found in a barrel by people just walking alongside the shore there by Lake Mead yesterday. Now today, the Las Vegas Police Department says an autopsy has confirmed this is now a homicide investigation. They believe the victim died about 40 years ago. When they walked up closer to the barrel, they looked inside and they could see see that there were human remains. National Park Service Rangers first responded to the call Sunday afternoon in Lake Mead Park. They were able to confirm the remains were human. The case was immediately turned over to the Las Vegas Police Department homicide detectives. Because of the injuries that the victim received, we are confident it's a homicide investigation. I'm withholding intentionally certain details of the investigation, but we are for certain this is a homicide investigation. Now, Homicide Lieutenant Ray Spencer says his team has the challenge of figuring out just who this person was. We have not identified the victim. It's going to be an extremely challenging case for an investigation to begin, just because, one, we have to determine can we even extract DNA. Detectives believe the victim was killed around the 1980s because of personal items still intact that they found inside the barrel. But even with the remains and the personal items, it doesn't make identification a quick or easy process. You have to think back to the 1980s. None of the databases that are in existence today even existed back then. So it's not like we're going to have this person's DNA on file. Las Vegas PD will have to work backwards to see if they can make a genealogical connection and possibly work off the missing persons list from that time. It's going to be a challenge for investigators because trying to identify someone who's been in the lake for that long is going to be very hard to do. And the police department says that barrel did not just wash up on shore. When it was dropped 40 years ago, they say the water levels for Lake Mead were actually higher. So because that water level is receding because of drought, that is why we are seeing this appear right now. And the police department also says that it's possible with the water level continuing to recede, more bodies could show up. We're live in Phoenix. Marissa Sarbach for Fox 10 News. A Valley man in custody in California tonight accused of murder here in Arizona. His ex-girlfriend was found shot in her car on Sunday after calling 911, and she died soon after. Fox 10's Brian Webb is live in Apache Junction tonight with details. Brian. Well, this young woman tried to protect herself with a restraining order and a last-ditch effort to call 911. But in the end, she was shot on a busy street in broad daylight, and police say all roads lead back to her ex-boyfriend. A small memorial sits along the side of Old West Highway in Apache Junction. Flowers, balloons, and notes left behind by family, friends, and complete strangers. We're doubted on uh, my Apache Junction, and my daughter's right around that age. You know? It's just heartbreaking. This is 28-year-old Maria Guadalupe Godinez Ramirez, seen on a GoFundMe page, created by friends to help raise funds for funeral expenses. Police say she was driving home Sunday afternoon when she called 911 saying she'd been shot. The first arriving officers did their best to save her life. Started performing life-saving measures on her. She was later transported to the hospital. Unfortunately, a few hours later, she died in surgery. It didn't take long for detectives to look in the direction of 34-year-old Ulysses Peraza, a former boyfriend with a restraining order filed by Maria last December, stating that she feared for her life. He was in another vehicle, had followed her from her place of employment um, back here to the city of Apache Junction, where ultimately she was shot. Detectives say they found Peraza in the Los Angeles area on Wednesday, still in the same vehicle spotted at the crime scene. And they plan to bring him back to the valley where her heartbroken family awaits justice. They lost, you know, a 
daughter, a sister, um, Maria Godinez Ramirez also has two small children, so that's a big loss, um, losing their mother. Police expect it'll take a couple of days to get Peraza back to Arizona. In the meantime, they're asking anyone with information on the crime to call Apache Junction police. Live in Apache Junction, I'm Brian Webb, Fox 10 News. We report on it a lot these days. The amount of drugs, specifically meth and fentanyl, flooding into our country is reaching record levels. And because of that, the Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, looking to hire thousands of new agents across the country and they're hoping to get the upper hand on the war against drugs to try to save lives. Fox 10's Stephanie Bennett tonight went to see what it takes to become a DEA agent. Is the line ready? The line is ready. Move! We are the premier drug enforcement agency in the world. Out at the gun range with the DEA's special response team. This is the best job in the world. These tactical operators are spending the day in Marana, sharpening and mastering their skills. They're out at the range, building camaraderie. They're sharing some teamwork and shooting some targets. The illegal drug market is forever evolving, and these agents have to adapt with it. Just a few years ago, DEA agents say cartels and dealers would smuggle tons of marijuana across our southern borders. But now that states have started legalizing it, they're seeing a major shift, as it's now all about meth and fentanyl. And the popularity is skyrocketing, as it's easier to produce, transport, and hide, they say. And sadly, it's more addictive and deadly. The difference is now, with these precursor chemicals coming from China, and with the super labs manufacturing synthetic fentanyl, synthetic uh, methamphetamine, we're looking at an unquantifiable amount of drugs that are focused right here in Arizona and coming right into our backyard. In 2020, Arizona's branch of the DEA seized around 6 million fentanyl pills. In 2021, that number doubled to 12 million. And just within the first four months of this year, they've already had more than 4 million pills. Did you say this is the busiest it's ever been? This is, yes. And it's more terrifying now, I think, than in 25 years of law enforcement that I've ever seen. You'll give me three rounds! Because of that spike in drugs, Move. They're looking to hire thousands of special agents for positions across the world. But the application process is intense and needs to be taken seriously. From starting the application to being fully trained and on the job takes about a year, they say. Next year, we plan to have eight special agent academy classes. Uh, in each class, we have 54 uh, basic agent trainees. And so our um, goal is to try to fill every vacant special agent position within DEA in the next few years. Now, the first step to this job application process is the physical fitness test. Now, they tell me about 60 to 70 percent of the people actually fail it. Let's see how hard it is. Set. Go. Today, we are going to administer DEA's physical fitness test. It's a four-part test involving sit-ups, push-ups, a 300-meter sprint, and a mile-and-a-half run. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's not a test that you can just come out to and expect to, you know, pass without practicing. Woo! Good. Good. Awesome. Good job. Woo. Each applicant must obtain at least one point in each of the four categories with a cumulative score of 12 or higher in order to pass. You have one minute to complete as many proper sit-ups as you can. Safe to say I did not pass, but if an applicant fails, they can come back in 60 days and try again. If approved, they'll move on to the next steps of the application process. Phase two is a written assessment. Phase three is a panel interview. And then we move on to a polygraph, a medical, and a psychological assessment. And somewhere in that last phase, a background investigation is conducted. After that, you'll head to their training facilities in Quantico and then be fully qualified. To become a special agent, we are looking for people who want to be part of something that is bigger than themselves. This is about the mission and about saving lives. We are looking for people with integrity, with courage, with work ethic. Second, we are fun. We are a family and we take care of each other. Come on, Stephanie! You got, you got it. Yeah, good job! 
For Fox 10 News, I'm Stephanie Bennett. Police call it a theft epidemic. For months, we've been covering the scourge of stolen catalytic converters. And prosecutors say they're holding thieves accountable as one Phoenix man just got his sentence. Fox 10's investigative reporter Justin Lum breaks down that convicted felon's record and pattern. A crime trend of vehicular destruction still sweeping the valley. All over catalytics, is this all worth it? That we're pointing guns at people, we're fleeing from the police. Targeting what's underneath your vehicle as you're victimized in your own driveway. There's a lot of people who have their vehicles totaled because of this. We've heard from the victims and asked police why thieves want catalytic converters. Inside the catalytic converter are three platinum metals, rare earth metals, platinum, palladium, and rhodium. And in the last couple years, the prices of these metals have gone up. Costing you thousands of dollars while crooks make a couple hundred as the converter somehow ends up at a scrapyard. We've asked what lawmakers must do to crack down on the black market. Add more tools to the tool chest for law enforcement to ensure that we can capture those in the, the bad actors. We even went undercover to see who will cash in on a used cat converter. Unlicensed sales are illegal in Arizona. I take it directly to him because I know him. I'm not going to send him to jail. Now this catalytic converter thief is headed to prison. 29-year-old Eric Hernandez seen here during his sentencing on April 22nd. These catalytic um, converter thefts are plaguing the community. We have multiple victims in this case. Hernandez pleaded guilty to third-degree burglary and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after being indicted with a host of charges linked to stolen cat converters out of Scottsdale, Mesa, Tempe, Chandler, and Phoenix. Investigators say he has a substantial involvement in the Valley's catalytic converter theft epidemic. Scottsdale police arrested Hernandez last June after he threatened a homeowner as they confronted him once he tried to steal their catalytic converter. The one victim who confronted him to stop the theft, he pulled a gun on. Not only in possession of a handgun, police found an AR-15 in the back seat of Hernandez's car, along with two freshly cut cat converters. Hernandez already had three outstanding felony arrest warrants at the time. The prosecutor on the case says his crimes are drug motivated. The behavior that he's choosing um, to support his addiction um, is, is just es escalating so quickly. Here are Hernandez's 12 mugshots from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office alone, starting from 2011 up until 2021 who went through his extensive criminal history and most of the convictions are drug related, ranging from possession to narcotics for sale. He's also prohibited from carrying weapons. DOC records reveal he served two separate sentences in prison for a total of five and a half years. Now he's going back with a seven and a half year sentence. Would you call this a pretty heavy sentence? A fair sentence in this case? Um. It is a fair sentence for what he did. Interim Maricopa County Attorney Rachel Mitchell says cat converter theft is a class 4 felony, but Hernandez's priors mandated prison time. The seven years, though, was possible, really, because of the weapons offense that he committed on top of that. Mitchell says the criminal behavior linked to stolen cat converters is becoming more brazen and violent, commonly influenced by drug addiction. The most recent study released by the Bureau of Justice says during 2007 to 2009, more than half of state prisoners and two-thirds of sentenced jail inmates met the criteria for drug dependence or abuse. We reviewed 16 other cases of catalytic converter theft prosecuted by MCAO. In 10 of those cases, defendants had prior arrests for drug offenses, prior convictions for drug charges, or admitted to drug abuse to police. A recipe for disaster when you have somebody that is desperate on drugs and armed. And that's why this sentence that we got in this case was very fair. That's somebody that's dangerous. And I'm going to recommend on this count that you be housed in a DOC facility that offers substance abuse treatment. For prosecutors, the full package is always a challenge in getting a conviction, whether it's victims coming forward, clear evidence of the thief suspected, and damage left behind. Meanwhile, police across the valley tackle the spike in cat converter crimes and continue to send in cases. What's necessary is we need to be able to show that that person who is in possession of that catalytic converter is aware that it is stolen or is st has stolen it him or herself, um, and that we can link that back to a particular victim. One major obstacle is MCO's backlog of cases across the board, and Rachel Mitchell says the office is understaffed 
by 20%. Meanwhile, House Bill 2652 is up for a final vote in the Arizona House of Reps Thursday. And if passed, all scrap metal dealers will be required to mark catalytic converters brought in for sale and document information on the seller. I'm Justin Lum for Fox 10 Investigates. And meanwhile, prosecutors in Idaho are planning to seek the death penalty against Lori Vallow, filing their notice of intent yesterday. Vallow and her family lived in the valley before her two kids went missing, and she is now charged with the death of those both of her children. Their bodies found buried on the property of her husband, Chad Daybell, both also charged in the death of Daybell's first wife. The trial is set for January.